Okay. All right, so I want to welcome Aaron Martini to uh, Rotary today. Uh, widely known as the most busy woman in North America. <laughs> um, my almost next door neighbor. Uh, she's on the Village Board of Trustees, the Trustees of Bennington, of the Bennington Museum, uh, mom of three. Um, wears two hats at Bennington College. Um, and a new director of the Robert Frost Town House Museum. So uh, I'll turn it over to you. Thank, Thank you for coming. Thank you. Um, thanks so much for having me today. I'm happy to be here with you and excited to tell you more about what we're up to at the Robert Frost Stone House Museum. I'm going to tell you a little bit about how I this is too loud. No, it's okay. 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 I'm going to tell you a little bit about how I came to the museum, about the museum and Robert Frost, and some of the things we've been up to, as well as our goals for the house for the upcoming year. Bennington 17 years ago. I grew up in the Northeast Kingdom of Vermont and went to high school in the northwest corner of the state. My dad was a, uh, my dad was actually a Rotarian too. Mm -hmm. And um, he was a Canadian customs broker, so we always lived along the top of, of the state. In high school, I worked at my friend's apple orchard in the fall, which was just down the road from where I lived, and at an organic farm for two summers. Uh, these two farms are actually still going, um, which is, you know, they've been 30 years later. Um, the one on the left is West Swan Orchards in West Swan, which is where I grew up. And then the one on the right is Hudak Farm in St. Albans, Vermont. When I think back, these were really important experiences in shaping my love of farms and the agrarian tradition in Vermont. After college in New Hampshire, I worked in, as a museum educator at the Children's Museum in Boston. Coincidentally, I worked with Dina Mallory, who is the education director at the Bennington Museum. She's now serving as one of the acting directors now that Robert has left the museum. After getting a master's degree in St. Louis, Missouri in art, I began working at the college, assisting the vice president for planning and special programs there. Uh, it was Joan Goodrich, if, if any of you know her. Because of my background, I started taking on other tasks working with the college's art holdings, design projects, and also helping students with art projects on campus. I also started a family. My husband and I have three children, as Dana said. My husband is a poet who grew up on a farm in the Northeast Kingdom, so Robert Frost was very important in shaping his love and understanding of poetry. As my children have gotten older, I've gotten more and more, more involved in the community. I serve on the board of the Village School of North Bennington with Judy. I also became a trustee of the Village of North Bennington, and I serve on the board of the Bennington Museum. So the Robert Frost Stonehouse Museum was founded in September 2002 by Carol Thompson and Dr. Peter J. Stanless. From 2002 to 2017, Carol Thompson served as the museum's director and curator, as well as the main staff member and a guide, which is a big feat. Now, now that I'm in that position, that's a lot of work, and she did it. Um, she did an amazing job. The museum was officially donated by the nonprofit organization Friends of Robert Frost to Bennington College in December 2017. Megan Mayhew Bergman was the first director under the college's ownership. She did an amazing job working to build ties with the community as well as bringing exciting programming to the house. I helped with some of the light restorations to the house, wearing my design hat at the college, and I just fell in love with the house. I helped students install a couple of exhibitions there. One of the work of J.J. Lankes, a printmaker and collaborator of Frost's, and another an exhibition of works from the college's art holdings, using Frost as a lens to select artwork. And when Megan left for a full-time teaching position at Middlebury College, I was thrilled to have the opportunity to take over as director. So this shows um, right here is a woodcut that a student actually designed, a Bennington College student designed this woodcut as a logo for the house. Um, this is some of the restoration work that we did, very light, we did some painting, removed some uh, wallpaper, um, repaint, you know, repainted some of this entry um, uh, desk, and then also um, Charlotte Lyons on the right, um, who you'll see had a workshop at the house uh, earlier this summer that Judy and I, uh, I 
did, which was amazing, she painted um, the words to Stopping by Woods on the wall in there, um, which I think is a great touch. People can really spend some time in the house and be immersed with the poem and remember that he wrote it, um, wrote it right there. Okay, let's see. Just a little information about Robert Frost. Uh, he moved to Shaftesbury to the Pele Cold Farm in 1920, which at that point was 90 acres. Has a rough hewn 250 year old Dutch colonial house. A uh, beautiful house. I actually, when we first moved here, I was, I was enamored with the house. And often when my children were, um, I would take them on nap rides sometimes, and I would just park at the house. I thought it was, I thought it was beautiful. And I would read, look at the house, and my children would sleep, which is great. <laughs> um, he wrote, I need to plant a new garden of Eden with a thousand apple trees of some unforbidden variety. He was taken with an apple orchard on the property, calling it as good as they get. Uh, Frost was teaching at Amherst prior to coming to Vermont. Um, he knew he would eventually come back to teaching, but he wanted to have some space to write. He began thinking he wanted fruit trees, and the growing season was extended by moving to southern Vermont. He had a house in Franconia, New Hampshire. Um, he taught around, but he often would go back to Franconia, so southern Vermont extended um, the growing season, and, and apple orchards dotted the landscape. He also, his son, Carol, was interested in farming as well, so he wanted to do that with him. On a June morning in 1922, he wrote Stopping by Woods on a snowy evening in a few minutes without any strain after staying up all night working on the poem, New Hampshire. Uh, New Hampshire was uh, published, the, the, the collection of poetry in New Hampshire was published in 1923, and, and it won Frost his first of four Pulitzer Prizes. So um, I, just some of the priorities for the, for the Frost House. Um, we are interested in continuing, and I'll show, go, run through some slides after this of some of the events and some of the things that we've done over the, over the past year. Um, really frost-related programming. Um, so anything related to poetry, outdoors, farming, education. Frost was a gifted educator, um, and, and really making. Um, if we want the house to really be a gathering space for community, and we also want to make sure the grounds, um, people feel like they can use the grounds, outside of the sort of open hours of the house. Um, again, as you, you probably know, it's right next to the Robert Frost Trail, so people can feel like they can park, walk the trail if they want, spend some time on the grounds. There's an orchard, and um, it's a really beautiful, beautiful spot. Another priority is exhibitions that, are, that expand our understanding of Robert Frost. We want to... Um, continue to, to have partnerships with the community. I've reached out to a lot, I've spoken with a ton of people over the past, um, and I, I guess I didn't say, I started uh, in the position in July, so over the, over the summer I've, I've been talking with a lot, a lot of community members about ways that we can collaborate on projects. And also really want to get into programming for, for local schools, so developing school programs so that students can both come to the house, but we can actually also go into the schools. And then we also, because, because the, the college um, you know, owns the house, we do want to create opportunities for our students, Bennington College students, through coursework, uh, curating exhibitions, and events. So I'll run through some of the things that we've been doing this summer. Um, concerts, we've had um, the one on the, the, the concert on the left is uh, Carly and Will, which was, which was a couple months ago. We had a great family turnout. A lot of kids came. A lot of families, you can see there's a bunch of kids dancing, actually little children, which was wonderful. And the one on the right was Cradle Switch, which was just actually a few weeks ago. And we had about 150 people. It was an amazing turnout. For both uh, concerts, we had vis-a-vis -vis the solar-powered food truck there. The food was amazing, and we had a cash bar. So we'll, you know, I was talking to someone about getting the word out um, and we're trying to figure out ways to get the word out so more people know about these events. Um, so if you, if you have any ideas, please come talk to me. Another, another thing that we did at the house were um, botanizing walks. Uh, these are with Bennington College faculty uh, and ecologist Carrie Woods, who Sally probably knows. <laughs> um, they were named, um, so named, 
Robert Frost used to take what he called botanizing walks with friends through the woods. And actually, the, the botanizing walks were, were supposed to be the impetus behind or, the, or what, how he came to write um, The Road Not Taken. So during the walks, Carrie Woods shows, uh, shares his knowledge about trees and plant identification just as a way to appreciate the natural world on the grounds. These, I, I attended the one this, uh, this it was uh, kind of late spring. They were really well attended, a, a, a lot of really great questions, and just interesting to get to walk the full, um, the full grounds. I, uh, you know, I'm often walking into the house and back out of the house. So we, we walked all over, and um, it was really, really interesting. We also have uh, poetry readings and workshops. Uh, the slide on the left is uh, Philip Williams, who's a Bennington College faculty member of poetry, um, faculty member. This was a couple weeks ago at the house. There's a little red, I don't, I don't have a picture of it, but you may know there's a screened in sort of barn um, area and that's where the reading was. So it's a, it's a lovely, delightful place for um, both readings and um, outdoor workshops. James Cruz is a local poet and he did a writing workshop also this summer um, at the house. And this is uh, school visits. Uh, on the left is a group of international students, actually, from Bennington College. International students show up earlier to college, um, to, to, the, to campus, than some of our other returning students. So they had a special visit to the Frost House. And you know, I was amazed how much they knew about Robert Frost, um, which really speaks to the impact that his work has had throughout the world. Uh, one student in particular said that he had read Stopping by Woods in three different grades and studied it. So they were taking tons of photographs. They were, they were really in awe of the house, which was really exciting to see. Uh, and then on the right is a, <laughs> we were invited to attend the um, SBSU Back to School Fair for Teachers. Uh, this, I forgot, to take, <laughs> I forgot to take photos during the event, so there were a lot of teachers there. Uh, this was when we were packing up, but this is Carling Burkout, who's our uh, the, the Frost Fellow for um, the Stone House. Carling graduated last year, and the Bennington College has what we call Kilpat Fellowships for three or four recent grads to stay on in different departments throughout campus. And the Frost House has one of these. She's been an amazing. She's a writer herself, a poet, and an amazing musician. She actually was one of the musicians in the, in the concert series that we had, so. Oh, and one, one thing I also wanted to um, announce is that we have decided to be, f to, to be free for practicing teachers. So any teacher that is, that is teaching at, at this time can come in and show an ID and we will be free for them at the house. Uh, another event was a vegetable tasting and seed exchange. Uh, this, uh, this was, we had four uh, farms generously donate produce for this event. We had Clearbrook Farm, True Love Farm, Earth Sky Time, and then the Purple Carrot Farm, which is the college's student-run farm. So they donated all this beautiful produce uh, and had folks come and just try out different things and different varieties of cucumbers and watermelon. Um, and we also had a seed exchange as part of it so folks could come bring their seeds and exchange with other people um, for, for seeds that they wanted. We sort of made this as an extension. The Bennington College Crescent Library has a seed library within it. So if you go into the library right in the entryway, there's an old card catalog that actually has seeds in it. So you can go through and take seeds and leave seeds. and more photos. This was really fun and a beautiful day, so we took more photos of this. We're in one <laughs> And this was, Judy and I both attended this Indigo Dying workshop with Charlotte Lyons, who's a local craftswoman. She's an amazing artist and, and craftswoman and did a wonderful workshop. Um, we had a great, great time. Um, we're hoping to offer more workshops at the house. It, it went really well. I think Charlotte had a good time. I had, I had an amazing time. The bag that I, I brought in today was from that, and I know Judy had a good time. So we're, we're hoping to continue doing workshops at the house. 
and this is that little red barn I was telling you about that is great for workshops or poetry readings and who knows. And then I wanted to let you know about a, some upcoming events. Um, we have Surplus Daughters coming uh, next Saturday from 1 to 2. This is actually part of Bennington's Fall Family Weekend. Um, we'll have apple cider pressing and donuts, so please come and join us. Uh, we have, we've partnered with uh, a, a bunch of um, institutions through um, Andrea Malinowski, Rise Vermont, SVMC, UCS, and the Fund for North Bennington to bring author Cheryl Sukors um, here who wrote the book 48 Peaks, Hiking and Healing in the White Mountains. She's going to do a, 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 a reading, but before that we're going to have a tick awareness presentation. Um, and then just open trail walking and some uh, light refreshments. So that's October 20th from 3 to 5. And then on November 10th from 1 to 4, we're going to have a holiday maker's market at the house. And all of the, yeah, please, these are all uh, free events, so please come in and join us for these. And then looking forward, uh, next year, I don't know if, if you know, is the 100th anniversary of Frost moving to Vermont. Um, so we have been partnering and working with the Bennington Museum to come up with programming and a shared ticket and tour buses and lots of stuff to uh, really promote uh, that anniversary. Um, we have a poetry trail in the works for spring of next year. So we would have at least portions of poems, if not the whole poem, poems. Um, Goodbye and Keep Cold, Stopping by Woods on a Snowy Evening, um, Mending Wall and Nothing Gold Can Stay, uh, around our property at the house. So that is planned for this spring. Again, as I mentioned, we want to work on school visits, either going into schools or having schools come visit the house. Uh, more workshops, more poetry readings and poetry workshops and continue with a concert series. It's been really great and really popular. And um, we're, we're hoping to have a, a little sponsor, a little league team. So uh, we have a donor that is interested in having a Robert Frost little league baseball team. So we're hoping, I talked to Jeff Metcalf, he's interested. So if there is a space for us for next year, if they need a sponsor, we're, we're in. So um, that's all I had for today, but if you have any questions. I have one. Yeah. Um, how long did he live there, and how old was he when he died? He lived there um, for, he was there from 1920 to about 1929. Um, he, they, they moved to the house, and he, at some point, gave it to his son, Carol. <laughs> Carol was, became engaged and was married while they were all living there. So I think what happened was the house was feeling very full. He had Carol, Carol's wife, his wife, other children were coming home, and so he was needing some space. So he actually rented uh, Shingle Cottage, which is on uh, Bennington College's property for, for a while, and then ended up buying a house um, up the road uh, in Shaftesbury. So he was there from about 1920 to, to 1929. And then the year, I'm so I'm here, I'm so sorry, I have to, I, I should have known this on the top of my head, but I'm just blanking on it right now. He, it was, um, it was 63 to 70, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I know I should know this, but hold on. Yeah, no, I feel terrible. He died in 63, so it was 74 to 63, and I think he was 80. I'm sorry. Pardon me? He was 80 something. Yeah, he was 80 something. <laughs> 80 something. I'll get back to you. I know that. Sorry. <laughs> I might have missed it, but can you tell me what your open hours oh, are? Oh, I didn't tell you. Okay. Uh, Wednesday through Sunday, we're open 10 to 4. So we're, we're open June through November, or through October 31st. So basically, uh, May. May we have. May we have slightly different hours are open Friday through Sunday, 10 to 4 for the month of May, because it's a little quieter. And then June through uh, October 31st, we're open 10 to 4, Wednesday through Sunday. Great. And I know when I, I used to be an innkeeper, there was, you know, there's all these tourism packages. Yes. 
So we had ecotourism and agritourism and historic tourism, and we tried to put together packages that included the um, Park McCullough House, yes. the Stone House, the Hill Dean, the <laughs> Monument, that guests could be able to buy these like discount books to go and do historic tours. We were, I mean, we haven't done, that's a great idea. I know we've worked with the Bennington Museum. We did, we, I worked with Susan there. Where we have a, sort of a package deal that you can do as a tour um, for Robert Frost. So that would, would be, this will probably start next year because they're going to have an exhibition up next year in, in um, because of the 100th anniversary of Frost. So it would be a stop at the Bennington Museum, the grave site, and then coming to the house in Shaftesbury. But I, I, that's a great idea, I expanding the... Because, you know, I'm still in the tourism business um, in some ways, and I think that what I find from my visitors is that they go to Manchester because of the shops right. and, you know, I'm going to stay engaged. Um, and I have to convince them what Bennington has right. to offer. And so I think that, you know, having... And Bennington has history to right. offer. It has arts and it has history and all those great packages. So I encourage the historical sites to think about ways we can embrace the tourism trade and, and get them, because I think they really would. But I collect all the tourism stuff, and I go online, and I don't see a lot connecting those points mm -hmm. between the museum, the monument, yeah. um, and um, stone house, and all that. So that's I a great idea to not to expand it farther than just you know even just the Bennington Museum. And right. Yeah. Really make yeah. that. Betsy, does the Park Hotel still do tours? Yes. Um, I think it does, but we yes. have a new executive yes. director there, so new energy is coming into the Park McCullough House. So, Saturday, again, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Yeah. So, um, you know, again, it's it's really nice to be able, and we, and bless Lindy, because Lindy and I used to do this together. We would make a lot of effort to put them in all the motels, yeah. all the hotels, yeah. put them right there on the dresser, so that people had this, and. Um, Again, people like to get something for less money, so right. you know it was a discount right. pass. One thing that I have been talking to, I, there's someone at Bennington that came from, she worked at a hotel in Manchester, so she's had a lot of suggestions of just having tickets for sale in the hotels for a reduced price, um, just, just, and then it, it, just to get them down here, and even offering some open houses for innkeepers or for hotel folks that work at hotels but just so, so they can recommend. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. So I agree. Part. I agree. Um, I'm a docent of the Old First Church. We have set, we have brought across the book mm -hmm. of poetry. We have the brochure, the uh, little article book that um, Phil Holland has done. Yes, yes. And we, I would say that for half the people who come in want to know what Robert Frost has in relationship to the church, he mm -hmm. talked there, mm -hmm. and where the cemetery right. is, right. where his grave is, right. and we right. have to continuously, right. sometimes sure. we have to go in person, but it's, <laughs> it's constant, and we are really well versed. Right. But I didn't know, there I am, really good dosen. I didn't know what hours you're open. Right. No, I will, I, yeah, yeah, we should get, Cards to you. We're working on an updated rack card. Mm -hmm. At least you could have that, or even if I just give you a sheet with our hours on it. Yep. Yep. The books. And the chamber is becoming a great resource. Um, okay. Sure. So, both, you know, yeah. Um, so, Bennington.com and uh, ManchesterVermont.com are great resources. Great. That's really helpful. Thank you. For salads. Uh, have you connected with the libraries? And, and, and mm. they have to the that's what I thought about that. I think that's a great idea. Yeah, really yep. I good. should talk to Jenny and, um, and the Benny tomorrow. That's a great idea. I will. Thanks. So. <laughs> you might also, you might also uh, since it's an 100th anniversary, you might also talk to Eric Peterson at the uh, Old Castle Theater because he has done uh, one person shows around. Uh, they have one in Moses. There's a show actually that I got some information about. I don't think we would be able to at the house. It's, we just don't have the seating. Yeah, but that yeah. might be that's a great that's a great idea for the anniversary to to, yeah. to have I mean, multiple. To have a lot yeah. of things going. Yeah, absolutely. And then I think you and to get the chamber to make it public. Mm -hmm. That's a great idea. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Uh, uh, Jim is Still here? Yeah. Okay, uh, he, you know, he's doing a great job with the interaction. 
kids, which is high school age, mm -hmm. and uh, I can just see a natural link between yeah. Bennington College yeah. and Interact. Yeah. And you know, all these folks here are doing something else other than belonging to Rotary. Mm -hmm. So that's I'm a great idea. Yeah. See them. So, I'll get in touch with them about that because we could use, there's certain events, so I was just saying to Judy that we could use, or even just staffing the house, just having another set of hands, or yeah. especially during October, so yeah. it's a great idea. Yeah. Judy, Aaron, uh, before they do Robert Frost the Musical, um, <laughs> <laughs> I have a submission. I don't know, do you know the song Hernando's Hideaway? Uh, I do, uh, I do. Well, stopping by Woods on a snowy evening fits perfectly into that song. Great. Whose woods these are, I think I know. I know, uh, it's going to be great. Yeah. See, you should do this. Right. I love it, for next year. For next year. Right. For next year. Right. Right. I just saw it. Great. Right. Right. I'm going to try to market it. Trade market, quickly. Quickly, right. right. I didn't hear it. Yeah. Well, I was going to make an observation. These days, I often think of the Robert Frost line, something there is that doesn't like a wall. Yes. Oh, wow. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Should That's a good idea. I know. Should, yes. Thank you, Sally. Yeah. Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank you so much, everyone.